اوایل ژوئن 2009 پاسپورت های بخش جنایی اداره پلیس لس آنجلس استفانی لازاروس عضو سابق پلیس رو دعوت کردند تا در مورد اثر هنری که چند وقت پیش دزدیده شده صحبت کنند لازاروس برای مدتی مسئول همین پرونده دزدی بود اونا بهش گفتن یه نفر رو بازداشت کردن که میخواد در مورد این سرقت هنری حرف بزنه نقشه پاسپورت ها این بود تا جایی که میشه مکالمه رو غیر رسمی پیش ببرن و با دقت منتظر یه لحظه کلیدی باشن تا وارد درگیری بشن لازاروس برای ورود به اتاق باید از لحش رو تحویل میداد پلیس نگران بود که نکنه واکنش خوشونت آمیزی ازش سر بزنه استفانی بی خبر از همه چیز سلاحش رو تحویل داد و وارد اتاق بازجویی شد I don't want to talk about this in the squad room because okay. I, I don't know who people are listening true, and if we go to my side اولین کاری که کاراگاه انجام داد این بود که یه لحن سازگار با مزنون رو تو دستور کارش قرار داد. اون از اثرات منفی محیط اتاق بازجویی با خبر بود. بنابراین با حقه برگزاری یه جلسه مشورتی دوستانه مثل مشاوره گرفتن در مورد سرقت آثار هنری، استفانی رو بدون درگیری و البته بدون سلاح وارد اتاق بازجویی کرد. We've been assigned a case that we've been looking at. Okay. okay. It's a new case, and as we're doing the case, there's some notes uh, to see uh, as far as your name being mentioned. Oh, do you, okay. Do you know John Rutten? برای یه لحظه تصور کن یه رقیب عشقی قدیمی رو از روی حسادت و عصبانیت به طرز وحشیانه ای به قطر رسوندی. 20 سال از اون ماجرا میگذره. یهو خودتو تو اتاق بازجویی میبینی که دقیقا روبروی دو تا بازپرس ارشد نشستی و اونا اسم کسی که به خاطرش مرتکب قتل شدی رو تو صورت چلیک میکنن. بازپرس ها میدونن اسم جان راتن دقیقا چجوری تلفظ میشه این تلفظ اشتباه یه استراتژی ساده بود برای اینکه ببینن مزنون چطور واکنش نشون میده برای یه لحظه ماجره قتل رو کنار بذاریم جان دومین رابطه طولانی استفانی بود. روانشناسا معتقدند این مکس طولانی برای به یاد آوردن اسم جان چهار برابر بیشتر از حد معمول بود. این نشون میده لازارو سعی کرده با فریبکاری وانمود کنه که مدت هاست به این اسم فکر نکرده. در حالی که در واقعیت اسم جان راتن تو حافظش حک شده و حتی اگه یکم اشتباهی تلفظ بشه به احتمال زیاد در حد میلی طول میکشه تا بفهمه منظور بازپرس چیه او میگه جان رو تو خوابگاه دیده در حالی که اونا چهار سال با هم قرار میذاشتن و چند تا از تعطیلات رو با هم گذروندن حتی اگه ازش مستقیما سوال نمیشد کسی که میخواد حقیقت رو بگه این اطلاعات رو بدون فشار داوطلبانه ارائه میده Good friends um lived in the dorms for I lived in the dorms for two years. Um You guys lived in the same dorm? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Dijkstra. Okay. Were you guys just friends or anything else or Yeah, we were we were good friends. Yeah. Was there ever any relationship or anything that developed between you guys? Yeah, I mean we dated uh uh-huh. you know. Um I mean is what's this all about? Well it's relating to uh his wife. متاسفانه تو این لحظه چهره استفانی تو کادر نیست اون بیشک تحت تاثیر این واکنش روانی معروف قرار گرفته بود مغز تو این لحظه با شلیک هورمونای ترکیبی خاص خودشو برای موندن و روبرو شدن با مشکل یا فرار کردن به یه جای امن آماده میکنه استفانی جنگیدن رو انتخاب کرد این کلمات کلمات تعجب آمیزی هن که برای بیان احساسات شدید استفاده میشن استفانی در طول این بازجویی بارها از این کلمات استفاده میکنه تا وانمود کنه توی یه سری خاطرهای مبهم و دور داره دنبال جواب میگرده 
اون سعی میکنه این تصور رو ایجاد کنه که از دو دهه پیش که اونا همدیگر رو ندیدن دلیلی نداشته به جان یا هر چیزی که مربوط به جان میشه فکر کنه استفانی 20 سال افسر پلیس بوده اون میدونه تحولات غیر عادی وضعیت به چشم باسپورسا یه پرچم قرمز درخشانه مزنونینی که گناهکارن اغلب سعی میکنن به عنوان یه ابزار دفاعی خودشونو به ساده لوحی بزنن تا از هر بحث و جدلی فرار کنن در حالی که مزنون بیگناه بدون ترس وارد جنگ میشه I mean, you said that I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are. Here's, here's, I mean, Stephanie, here's the situation. It's basically. بازپورس خیلی نامحسوس بی خیال سوال میشه اما در عوض یه جواب فریبنده و اطمینان بخش به مزنون میده. اون برمیگرده به موضوع قبلی و در مورد شایعات محل کار حرف میزنه. در واقع تمرکز رو برمیگردونه به همون تصور اشتباه استفانی در مورد اینکه اونا همه توی یه سایدن. استفانی پرسیده بود اینجا چه خبره و حالا بازپورس با جوابش این اطمینان رو بهش میده که ما دوستتیم. چه شوکه شده باشه چه برای پذیرش وضعیت موجود بیمیل باشه به هر حال با احتیاط جواب اطمینان بخش بازپرس رو میپذیره و برمیگرده به همون فاز قبلی خودش که توی سری خاطرات مبهم دنبال جواب سوالات میگشت از اینجا استفانی وارد فاز بعدی میشه اون شروع میکنه به توضیح بیش از حد موضوعاتی که اصلا نیاز به توضیح ندارن نشونه های واضحی از برانگیختگی بیش از حد تو صورت و حرکاتش مشخصه مزنون از پرداختن به جزیات مسائل بی ربط به عنوان وسیلهی برای تسکین استفاده میکنه. در واقع با این کار از این وضعیت وحشتناک برای چند لحظه فرار میکنه. این اتفاق تو بازجوی هایی که سوژه با اتهامات جدی روبروی زیاد میفته I started school there in 78 mm-hmm. I started UCLA in 1978 mm-hmm. I graduated in 82 um, I don't even remember what year he graduated if it was a year or two before me. Okay. Um, I think he was a little bit older than I was. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I can't remember if he was born, let's say I was born in 60, 1960. I don't know if he was born in 58 or 59. I mean, I, you know, um, I mean, I knew his parents, I knew his sister, his brother went to Northridge. Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, his sister spent the night at my house before. Obviously, I spent the night at his house before. He probably spent the night at my house before. Um, you know, I... before that so you um, haven't talked to him for a long time oh i i think i haven't talked to him in a long time um i couldn't even tell you when the last time i talked to him um i met scott i'm thinking in 92 maybe um april of 92 it was scott being your husband yeah i'm trying to think i was teaching dare let's see what year is this, this is, we'll be married i got married in 1996 i think i met scott in 92 Prior to that, I couldn't tell you how long I had talked, you know, talked to John b- prior to that. But mm-hmm. since um, you since you met your husband Scott, you hadn't talked to him. I mean, he may have called me uh, once or twice uh-huh. before we got married. Right. Um, you know, 
geez, I, I lived in, I moved to see me in 1994 because I lost my house in the earthquake. Oh, really? Um, uh, quite honestly, I probably keep in contact with a few people from the dorms. We we all we all lived on the tenth floor, um, and um, there's about three or four people I keep in contact with. There's probably like six or eight of us that were all really close. Mm -hmm. And who are those um, people? Oh, geez, um, Diana Basta. Um, the people I still keep I, I haven't been in contact with her in a long time mm -hmm. um, I mean wh 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 what's, uh, what's I mean what's this all about I mean well, let me ask you سوژه برای دومین بار کاراگاه رو به چالش میکشه و دوباره از زیر جواب دادن به سوال در میره اما این بار برعکس دفعه قبلی بازپرسا قصدشون افزایش فشاره یه روش ظریف و در این حال شدیدن موثر It was kind of a weird relationship. I mean, we 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 dated. Um, I can't say that he was my boyfriend. I don't know that he would consider me his girlfriend. Um, we just we dated. We did things. I played sports in college. He played basketball. His brother played basketball. Um, it, it, we just, you know, it just didn't work out. And, and once you guys split, were you guys still friends or kind of, uh, you know, problems? I mean, Is it Yeah. Friendly, not friendly? No, I don't think it was not friendly. I mean, we were friendly. Um, uh, I know that we went to Hawaii um, at one point. Yeah, I mean, I, you know. And you were it's, saying that... Um, the, it's 2009 now. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything? Or... Um... um سه تا سوال مرتبط با قربانی پشت سر هم از مظنون پرسیده شد تو دوتای اول چهرش ظاهرا شبیه این بود که داره فکر میکنه در حالی که اون جوابار از پیش میدونسته اما برای سوال سوم فرم چهره کاملا تغییر کرد این بار دیگه واقعا داشت فکر میکرد و برای جواب دادن به سوال در حال گشتن تو خاطراتش بود Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything, or? Um, um, or what she did for a living, or where she worked, or anything uh, about her? Well, I think she, I th I'm going to say that I think she was a nurse. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been so long ago. Well, let me ask you, did you go to their wedding, you know? No, I didn't go to their wedding. Um, no, I don't, did not go to their wedding. برای تشخیص وحشت عجیب و غریبی که تو این لحظه از چهره مزنون فوران میکنه لازم نیست متخصص زبان بدن باشیم اون برای اولین بار بعد از 20 سال با ماجرای مرگ غمانگیز قربانی روبرو میشه What did, um, you, what did you hear about that? I, I saw a poster at work. Um, I'm sure I spoke to him about it. Um, I think I spoke to another friend of his about it. Um, And how did, how did you first learn about that? Jeez. <laughs> Someone could have called me. I could have heard it at work. Um, I think at one point there may have been a flyer or something. I know a good friend of his... Um, Were you on the job back then when that happened? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm sure I was on the job. That's why I would have heard about it with the flyer. Um, he had a good friend, Mike, Mike Boldrick, Mike, mm, um, um, you know. But being that you're kind of, you used to see uh, John, you know, was it everything okay between you guys? I mean, there was never anything uncomfortable or anything between you and her? Um... You know, I don't know. I mean, it's God. It's been so many years. I mean, uncomfortable. I mean, I, I can't even. I can't even remember if we had a conversation. I mean, we may have. I may have. I may have seen her at his apart. You know, it, uh, geez, how many years ago is that? I don't even know what year she, you know, got killed. Where was his apartment? On Roscoe. Okay. Yeah, Roscoe and um, 
um, east or west of DeSoto, uh, either east or west of DeSoto. Do you know where he moved after? Did, did he move after he got married, or do you know? Or? حالا میشه دید چطور رفتار خونسا استفانی به جنون تغییر حالت میده. اون یه بار دیگه تو خاطرات مبهمش غرق میشه. I'm sure he did. Did you know where he was living or somewhere in the valley? Did you ever visit him and his wife? No. No, never no. went out, to, you know, get together dinners anything I know, of that nature. No. Like I said, his sister used to come over. His sister had, had, had come to my place. I knew his, I knew his brother because his brother played basketball at Northridge. And uh, after his wife died, did did you talk to him again or anything? Yeah, I mean, I did talk to him. Mm-hmm. I talked to him, probably his parents, um, probably some other friends, um, you know. But you you don't you're not sure where he moved to after he got married. No idea. I mean, never I, went over to to visit him or I don't think. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't think I did. Um, and you're right. I mean, if you guys are claiming that I'm a suspect, then you know I, I got a problem with you know with that. Okay. Okay. So. You know, if you're if you're doing this as an interrogation, you're saying, "Hey, I'm a suspect." Well, I, now I got a problem with you know. Now you're accusing me of this. Is that what you're Is that what you're saying? We're trying to figure out what happened, Stephanie. Uh, well, I'm. I was. You know, I'm just saying. The, you know, do I need to get a lawyer if you're accusing me of I this? Mean, you know. You don't have to. I mean, you know. I'm just, you're here of your own free will. I mean, no. You, you well, I know, but I mean, I you mean, know you're, not, you're not under arrest. You can walk out. You can leave you whenever you like. Well, but, you know, I, I'm trying to give you some background of you know how I knew him, and now you're telling me that some somebody's saying that we had this big old fight, and I don't even know what you're talking about. Um, you know, and I don't want to you know get in trouble for something that I didn't even do, or you're saying I did something. Okay. Yeah, we understand. I mean, how would you guys like it if the tables were turned on you? I understand. No, um, no, that's what we're telling you. I mean, you're free to go whenever yeah. you want. If if this makes you uncomfortable and you want to, well, you wanna now you're starting leave. to make me uncomfortable. The thing is, I mean, we're looking at everything else on the case because nobody was ever arrested <laughs> on the case. I I don't know that or not. Okay. Now, what we'd like to do is, obviously, you know about all the DNA stuff and things of the nature that you know gets done on cases nowadays. You know, if we asked you for a, a DNA swab, would you be willing to give us one? Maybe. Because <laughs> now, 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 yeah, because now, now I'm thinking I probably need to talk to a lawyer. Okay. I mean, well, I because I know how this stuff works, okay? Don't get me wrong. You're right. I have been doing this a long time. Yeah. And, and I wish I had been recording this because, because now it sounds like, you know, there's, you know, you're selling these people, say I'm a fighting with her, and now it sounds like you're trying to, you know... I've been doing this a long time. Yeah, we know. Okay, and it, and now it almost sounds like you're trying to pin something on me. No, now I, I got that sense. Well, what it gets to on these on these cases, and you know it as well as I do. Our job is to identify and eliminate. Suspects. I can't believe this. So if we ask you to point, to give us a DNA sample, a buccal swab, so we can identify or eliminate you, would you be willing to do that? Maybe. Because well, I know this. I I I. I well, that's where we're at too. I mean, because. Right now, from looking at the evidence, it's you know it's possible we may have some DNA at the location. That's great. And we're going to do what we can to try to put this thing together. And your name's in the book. These people are pointing at you for whatever reason. <laughs> I don't know why. And that's just crazy. I mean, that's just that's absolutely crazy. And it would be irresponsible on our part not to look at it. I know. You guys have to do your job, and, and I guess I'm going to have to contact somebody. So. That's fair. I mean, because uh, I know how this stuff works. Sure. I mean, I, 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 I just can't believe it. That's I, I mean, we, we understand that. I mean, if we were in your position, I mean, we would feel the same way. I, I just can't even believe it. I mean, it's just, I, I mean, I'm shocked. I'm really shocked okay. that somebody would be blam- saying that I did this. I mean, we had a fight, and so I went and killed her. I mean, come on. Well. That's. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for giving me the courtesy. I wish I Thanks for your time. Yeah, thank you. All right, Stephanie, take care. All right. This is 
absolutely crazy. Let me see, Stephanie. This is insane. Okay. Stephanie, you know you have the right to remain silent. Do you understand? Yes. Anything you say may be used against you in court. Do you understand? Yes. You have the right to the presence of an attorney before and during any questioning. Do you understand? Yes. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you free of charge before any questioning if you want. Do you understand? Yes. Do you want to talk to us right now? No. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. This then. is crazy. Okay. This is absolutely... I'm like, I'm like in shock. I'm totally in shock. اوایل دهه هشتاد جان و استفانی تو دانشگاه یو سی ای با هم آشنا شدن. جفتشون ورزشکار بودن. جان دونده بود و استفانی برای تیم بسکتبال دانشگاه بازی میکرد. اونا شروع کردن به قرار گذاشتن اما رابطهشون هیچ وقت درست شکل نگرفت. با این وجود استفانی نشونه های اولیه وسواس نسبت به جان رو تو موقعیت های مختلف از خودش نشون میداد. سالها گذشت و جان با دختری به اسم شری که مدیر پرستاری یه مرکز پزشکی بود آشنا شد و رابطهشون خیلی زود جدی شد. استفانی گرچه از این ماجرا دل شکسته شد اما کماکان با جان دوستیشو ادامه داد و حتی با خانواده‌اش هم تا مدت‌ها در تماس بود تا اینکه جان و شری با هم ازدواج کردند. صبح روز 24 فوریه 1986 جان طبق معمول از خونه اومد بیرون و رفت سر کار در حالی که شری تو خونه تنها بود. چند ساعت بعد چندین بار با خونه تماس گرفت اما کسی جواب نداد وقتی برگشت جسد همسرش رو کف اتاق نشیمن پیدا کرد شری چندین بار مورد اصابت گلوله قرار گرفته بود و نشونه هایی از درگیری هم وجود داشت به نظر می رسید که یه نفر وارد خونه شده و یه جوری صحنه سازی کرده که انگار یه سرقت اتفاق افتاده سرقتی که به این اتفاق وحشتناک ختم شده برای سالها کاراگاه های سرنخ و مدرکی پیدا نکردن تا یه مزنون برای این جنایت داشته باشند پدر و مادر شری به کارگاه اصلی پرونده التماس کردند که درباره استفانی لازاروس تحقیق کنند اما این اتفاق نیفتاد. استفانی مرتکب قتل شده بود و به نظر می رسید که هیچ جوره دستگیر نمیشه. اما سالها بعد وقتی تستای دی ای به کمک تحقیقات پلیس اومدن پرونده دوباره به جریان افتاد. جواب آزمایش های دی ای سرانجام استفانی رو به این جنایت مرتبط کرد. وکیلش با اشاره به وجود یه لکه خون تو صحنه جرم که نه مربوط به شری بود نه استفانی احتمال وجود یه مزنون دیگر رو مطرح کرد بعد با رد کردن جواب تست دی ای به خاطر محرموم نبودن پاکت نمونه تلاش کرد تا از موکلش در مقابل اتهام قتل دفاع کنه اما بعد از برگزاری دادگاه متعدد در نهایت استفانی لازاروس به عنوان مجرم اصلی این پرونده به 27 سال حبس محکوم شد Hmm. <laughs> 